Welcome back to the 99, where we are focused on brewing a better competitive commander. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, with a first in a new series of videos. This is overrated magic cards. Now, gang, I know that this is gonna be divisive. My goal is not to have an argument with you. However, I do wanna steer folks away from cards that are not as efficient and or as effective as advertised. Now, do note this is all coming from the perspective of a competitive commander player. So if you play another format that this card is good in, well, that might be true, but it does not apply to commander. Trust me, all trial and error with the cards we're gonna be talking about on this segment. I can see this being the most devastating to the channel's like-dislike ratio. And that's okay, because I do wanna hold those conversations with you guys. However, if you insist on buying the card or cards I mention in this segment, I will highly encourage you to do so via the link in the description. Guys, every time you purchase from TCG Player via that link, that choice allows for a portion of those proceeds to come to this channel. So if you wanna help us indirectly, that is the best way to do so. Thank you for making that decision. And if you want to help us directly, you can do so via Anchor and or Patreon. And as my brew babies know, you'll be thanked at the end of this video leading up to 99. And then who knows what the hell we'll be doing. But the card I want to talk about today, the card I'm, and I'm going to encourage you not to buy. This is very counterintuitive with the whole purchase cards through TCG player aspect. I realize that. I realize that when scripting this. You already know it, it was in the thumbnail. That card is Cavern of Souls. I'll read it off for you. <laughs> Land, as Cavern of Souls enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Tap, add colorless. Tap, add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. And that spell can't be countered. Now the only reason you'd want to use this card is that last mana ability coupled with the first static effect it has. So as soon as you plop this card into the field, you get to name one thing. Let's start there. Nine out of 10 times, I see this card played to name a subtype for a player's commander. Will that subtype be relevant to any other creature in your list? Not likely. Maybe you'll hit one to two other creatures with this, but even still, is that a great return for this land? Let's say you hit the jackpot. You have six creatures outside of your commander that this will hit. Do you imagine folks are really looking to counter your land of war elves? On that same note, do you think players are even looking to use counters on your commander? Among the most popular counters played, only a handful actually hit creatures. Mana Drain, Counterspell, Force of Will. Some of these lists might only have three or four spells that do this job. It's not common for players to mainline creature-specific counters because oftentimes a singular creature cast isn't going to win anyone the game. And to deal with a rogue Savala, you have much better options. You can steal her, exile her, destroy her, bounce her, false summoning, preemptive strike, remove soul, all cards you've never seen in Commander because they lack versatility. The only creature counter you may see is Withering Boon, and that's only because Blue got all of the viable counters and every other color is SOL. But that's for a different video. Among the commanders that are reasonable to counter are Godo and just that. Even still, if you have removal for his helm, you wouldn't waste your force of will on countering Godo. Or you shouldn't. Currently in CDH, the true creature menaces are Thassa's Oracle and Dockside Extortionist. One Merfolk Wizard and one Goblin Pirate. Please don't tell me you're running Cavern of Souls for one of them. Generally speaking, and this isn't accurate 100% of the time, but counters should be reserved for game-winning plays. You often hear the phrase, don't counter the tutor, counter what comes next. And what comes next isn't going to be a creature. However, you're still convinced the table is out to get you and you are slamming Cavern of Souls into your Godo list. Here, we have a bit of flexibility. Not with the subtype Barbarian, but our de facto two-card combo champ in red, Dualcaster Mage, that does in fact share the subtype Human. Dualcaster can definitely be game-winning, but Dualcaster isn't the card countered. It is always the Heat Shimmer and Twin Flame. Why? Remember, folks aren't packing Psychic Barrier, no. They're countering your copy spell with Flusterstorm, Swansong, Negate. I can go on, but hey, at least Dualcaster Mage entered the battlefield. Now, just so you know, I am speaking from experience. I own two Cavern of Souls, and neither is in a list right now. And that's because there are far better ways to handle creatures 
in Commander. Again, those precious counters are reserved for game-winning plays. For creatures, you mainline creature removal. Pongify, Swords to Plowshare, Toxic Deluge. Toxic Deluge being the most popular wipe and unsurprisingly at sorcery speed because getting rid of those pesky creatures was never really that urgent. Creatures in Magic are the most fallible. There are far too many cards printed that can handle them, either directly or even just coincidentally. Spells on the stack, however, are a very different story. The last thing really holding this card back, the real nail in the coffin for Cavern of Souls, is its cost. Cavern of Souls, on average, will cost you $70. Depending on which copy you get, where from, the condition, whether or not it's foil, 70 on average as of August 2020. Ask yourself, would you rather buy this card or put that money towards a Mana Crypt, Chrome Mox, or a Fetch Land, or even two Fetch Lands? Cards that will genuinely increase the efficiency of your deck and overall play experience you have. Cavern of Souls does not provide $70 worth of value, not in Commander. Truthfully, I wouldn't even want it at $7 because the effect is overrated. There you have it. I hope I convince you that Cavern of Souls is a no-go. You should probably take it from your list. It's not worth it. I've played it many a times. I think I've had a creature countered twice in all the years I've been playing Commander. Maybe twice. And they were both Teshar because I played Teshar very differently when I started playing that list. I usually drop Teshar when the combo was assembled, right? Which was broadcasting to everyone that I had a win. So of course you would stop Teshar then, right? If you haven't watched my Teshar Primer, I highly encourage you to do so, but that list used it and I had it in Savala, I wanna say, for a minute. And I'm thinking to myself, this is dumb. No one's gonna to wanna, to, no one's gonna counter my Finehorn Elves. No matter how fine those Finehorn Elves are, no one's gonna counter them because trust me, it's irrelevant. Like that, that package, irrelevant. Toxic Deluge, one, everything's dead. There's always a better way to handle a creature and Cavern of Souls is not gonna pull its weight. Trust me. But look, if you are insistent on buying it, you want to drop 70 bones, the best place to do so is TCG Player. You, you already knew that. Of course you did. I mentioned it in every video. Guys, link in the description if you want to help support the channel indirectly. Again, those proceeds, those sweet, sweet proceeds, a portion of which go to the channel, do help us out a lot. So thank you very much for making that choice. And gang, if you want to support us directly, you can do so via Anchor and or the main, the main, the main go-to, the go-to main, Patreon. Patreon. Help me with my stutter. <laughs> Help me with this channel's production costs by supporting us over on Patreon. There's a lot of stuff I want to change moving into the future. Um, I am very happy with the quality of the programming here so far, but there are a lot of things I want to change. And the support there goes towards fixing this place up and making my set even better. So thank you so much, everyone on the Patreon, for helping me out thus far. You guys are the best, and you all know who you are. But in case you forgot, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say all your names right here. Cavern of Souls, how long have you been playing it? Let me know, guys. Seriously, I would love to know how long you've been playing it. I took it out of my list months ago. I would say like seven months ago is the last time I used Cavern of Souls and zero regrets. Because I got to tell you, tapping for a generic elsewise, there's a detriment I didn't even bring up. Tapping for a generic for any other effect in your list... You know what? If you have a three to five color list, this is just not going to be a good card for you. Bam. Another detriment. I hope you guys hung around. I, I know the view retention for these. And it's, it's they're, they're, a lot of you are tipped off at this point. But for those that are here, Joseph, Wes, Brayden, thank you so much for your patronage. W, WRPG winner, Calvin. Why was that difficult? Sage, thank you. Guillermo, M-Virus, Cyro, and Phil. Seriously, though, Cavern, are you on it? I need to know what commander. I need to know if it's really been valid for you because there are some spite plays you've seen here and spite plays that happen that happen with creatures. So maybe you do need Cavern of Souls. Tornado Joe, Nick, Alexander, Spaceman, Student Matthew, Rod, and Nomad. Thank you guys so much for your patronage. I love that it's always random. You never know when you're going to get called. I've got a couple cards on this list, by the way, that I'm very excited to share. It's happened for generic. Gunblade Knight, Austin, Taylor, P. Dizzle, Jeffrey, Ave, John, Just Me, Rory, Brian, and Mikey Boy. Thank you guys so much for your patronage. Trevor Landers, Paul, Corwin, Tim, Adrian, Carlos, Kevin, and Sir Fluffykins. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. It really does mean a lot. 
Matthew, Kevin, Submox1, Adam, I'm not going to say your last name. If some of you don't like that. Dante, Joshua, Matthew, Rennell, Trent, Gregory, Harry, and Dave. Thank you, guys. There's a really amazing outpour of support over on the Patreon. Like, we've had a bunch more people jump into the Brew Baby Coot ranks. And I really do appreciate all you Brew Babies. Leonardo, Christopher, Carl, Craig, Mason, Paul, and Jake. Thank you guys for your support here on the channel. Gullius, Shout Fan, Bruno, Jason, Kev, and Allie. I love you guys. Josh, Clyde, Shaded, Frank, Jared, Brendan, and Shord. Thank you guys so much for your support. Shord, did you just tag me in Twitter? I'm going to get better about Twitter. Can't guarantee Instagram. Instagram doesn't feel like the place for magic, but I want to start doing more with the Twitter once I have more time to focus on anything other than filming. Nathan, Javier, Oliver, The Holy Knight, thank you guys for your patronage. Let me know if you've stayed this long, what other social media do you like for, excluding Twitch, do you like for your MTG content? I'm curious, or at least where do you want your updates from? I think I said The Holy Knight, but you're going to get it twice. The Holy Knight, Sam, Running Red, Jordan, Luke, Leon, and Mace. Mm, the best players in Magic. Why? Because they follow the 99. <laughs> That that can't entirely be true, but I've had some people recently say that price spikes were due to the channel, and more than one person, and I am impressed if that's true. I doubt it, but thank you so much. Tithe was always expensive, dude. Tithe was always expensive. Again, my name is Patrick Marlett. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am looking forward to doing very many more overrated card talks. Again, Pat, you guys, Brew Baby Crew, and all the rest of you, Happy Bruin Babies.